So you guys remember my friend Austin over here? This is the guy with the 65 Sport Fury that we featured last week. So one of the things we talked about with his car is that you originally had a 600 on it. Yeah. And what happened? It would uh, run really lean when you get it up above 2,500 RPM, and if you gave it more than half throttle just pushing it, it would just lean out. Okay, so then you, you switched to a 450. Yeah, we took the 450 that was on it before and just put it back on, and it seemed to even out. Okay. There is an issue, though, because your engine, so the, the formula that I usually go by is if you double the cubic inches, that's your starting point for carburetor CFM. So you're at what, 320? 323. 323. So double that up and it's six, 620, 646. 646. So a 650 should be just about perfect for it. And that's on the small side. So what we did was a uh, friend of mine had given me this Edelbrock that he found on top of a garbage pile or whatever, and I passed it on to Austin. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set this thing up. This is a 750 Edelbrock, um, which Edelbrock will flow about ballpark 50 cfm or so less than the equivalent size holly so this thing should actually be like right there in the ballpark of what this engine wants so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this carburetor show you guys all the little you know idiosyncrasies of these things and then next time we're going to actually stick this on the car dial in and figure out either if there's a problem with the you know the setup of the car itself or it was the problem with the carburetor but one way or another we're going to get this thing dialed in okay so what we've done here is you gave this a soak for a couple of days. Yeah, about two days. Two days. This this thing was like horrendous, okay? And soaking it doesn't really do anything for the inside, you know, but it, it did make the outside kind of presentable. Um, and we went ahead and we took this all apart and uh, cleaned off the, the major areas. You know, we're not looking for perfection here. We're looking for a carburetor that's going to function. So, and we picked up this, uh, eight, this cheap rebuild kit, $18 off of eBay. So, like, how do you go wrong, right? $18. Um, and before we get started with this, I found why I believe this carburetor ended up on the on the uh, the scrap pile. So where's that? Here it is. Okay. So this is a secondary air door flapper, right? And what this does is this delays flow through the secondary section of the carburetor until there's there's adequate volume to pull fuel, right? So this and what happens? I got these these weights. Okay, so what happens is the, the f air velocity has to overcome these weights. Well, what I found was that this, these things were stuck. Actually, it was, it was jammed like this. And I actually had to take, take this over to the grinder and dress it all down so that it fits and moves freely. So if you've got a carburetor, if you've got one of these carburetors and, and you're either not getting full throttle like you're supposed to, you get into the secondaries, you don't feel or, or hear anything different, or you get into the secondaries and it just falls on its face, there's a good chance you have the problem that we found with this one. So make sure that this sucker is, is, is free, has a free fall just like that. You don't have to have the carburetor apart to do this. You could just, with the lid on it, you could just reach down and, and give it a shove. And like I said, these things need to just fall back freely. All right, so that's, that's that. Okay, so now we disassembled the carburetor. And what we're going to do is go through all of the steps of putting it back together again. So we have our brake clean. So we, uh, first thing we want to do is just clear through the body of the carb. Make sure that all of the passages are clear. So we use the brake clean over here. All right, so you see in the front here, you got your primary jets. Okay, Let's set this up here. Primary jets here, secondary jets here. Okay, so just take that and blow through the jets. Uh, uh, it's going to come up this way. Make sure it's clear. If you see any GAC come up, then we know we got to go further and really get into cleaning it. If it comes out kind of clear and free, you were good to go. So go ahead. Okay. That's beautiful. Do these. Okay. That side. You could use compressed air for this, but good. Okay. These passages that he's blowing through right now are large. It's very rare that they get clogged up, you know, when a carburetor sits. I'm going to show you what those things are in a minute. Okay. All right. Now, also, while we're at it, right, here's the accelerator pump passage. Do the same with this. You should see it come out here. Okay, that's good and clear. 
All right. So let's uh. The body of the carb is ready to go. Now, as we were talking about cleaning out passages, this is the critical thing on these carburetors. If you've got one of these things and you can't get an idle adjustment out of it, you turn the screws and nothing happens, right? Your problem is going to be right here in the booster body, right? And it's going to be this little passage right here, this tube, okay? So what we want to do is we want to poke through this tube and make sure that it's clear, right? This one up here too, okay? So that's an air thing. All right, here, take that. Yeah, you got the wire. So what we're using here is we're using a length of stainless wire, okay, which is a perfect diameter for this. If you don't have any stainless wire, use a bristle from a wire brush. Take just just grab the bristle, pull out of the brush, straighten it out, and you can use that to pass through these passages. All right, so that's all clear. So what happens is when a car sits with gasoline in it for any amount of time, the gas evaporates and it forms a crust up in here into this passage, and that will keep this thing from idling. So we're idling, you know, where, where you've got good adjustment on it. So blow through that. Good. Okay, do the other one. Okay. Um, now also, you want to do the same thing. You want to do the same. This is the accelerator pump squirter, okay? And you see these very small passages right here. So that's clear. Do the same thing to that. Okay. Nice squeaky sounds. Good to go. You're a pro. Okay. <laughs> So, one of the things we found with this universal kit, you know, cheap, right? The gaskets that come with it, we've, we've pre-assembled this over here, the gaskets that come with it cover the passages perfectly, but they're off just a hair where these screws are. So, don't try to put the gasket down into the, into the body of the carburetor. Just put the gasket, if you're going to use one of these kits, put the gasket on there, run the screws into it, and then just, just drop it on as an assembly. So. And here, go through, just just pass through that also on the secondary boosters, okay? And then what you do is put all of this, put, put these back in there. And while you do that, I'm going to talk about the floats. So this is the top half of the carb. The kit comes with new seat assemblies, which I've already screwed on here, and they come with a, with a metal gasket. You want to make sure that that's in place. So those are already screwed down. It's, it is a universal kit, so it comes with two types of needles, a long one and a short one. This is one of the original ones that came out of the, this carburetor, so where are they? So we're going to replace them with these. Right. So we drop those in. Now we're going to mount our, but before we, before you put the floats on it, we need to put our lid gasket. Okay. Hmm, that fits good. The, uh, you want to make sure out, out of all of the holes on this, on these, uh, these gaskets and whatnot, the only ones that really, really count are these because this is for the, uh, for the drop rods. So you want to make sure that there's, there's, these are going to be, you know, airtight. The nice thing about these carburetors is even if you've got a gasket, a lot of times you'll take these things apart a few times, you'll tear the gasket a little bit here on the edges. They don't leak gas because the gas is all below the level of that. So, but anyway, you put the gasket on there first. Then we're going to take our floats and you know, I should be wearing glasses because I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah. You don't want to force anything here. Just okay, that's one. 
Here's the other. Pin in there. How do you make out the roasting? Oh, just get them in. Oh, come on. You know, you, you could do this a thousand times and it's never a problem, and you go to do it on camera. As long as these are in the right side, we're good. Make sure those are good and tight. That's another issue that I found with these carburetors. Um, you'll, you'll have erratic idle, the thing won't want to you know, settle in, or it changes, it goes smooth, and it starts. I have found these things where these screws are loose, and when that happens, you'll always get an intermittent weird idle. All right, so we got our floats in there. So we're, these things are obviously nowhere near set. Um, there are two measurements you need. All right, two measurements you need to make with these. You need to the height, which in this case is seven sixteenths of an inch between the gasket. You have to make this measurement with the gasket in place. Seventeen seven sixteenths of an inch between the gasket and the edge of the float here, and then the full drop which is supposed to be 15 sixteenths of an inch, or pro approximately, uh, uh, seven, it's 15 sixteenths, so you, could, you call it an inch, but it, that should be right there. And they give you this measurement device, all of these carburetor kits come with one of these things. So this scale is in 30 seconds. So 7 sixteenths of, of, an, of an inch, if it's in 30 seconds would be, uh, uh, Oh, I totally. So that's math. <laughs> seven sixteenths would be fourteen thirty seconds. Yeah. So, all right, all right. I'll go ahead and, and and get these things set. So fourteen thirty seconds. And here's you adjust these floats by bending this right here. Okay, the section, that little section between what's what's soldered to the float and the arm right there. So we're gonna give this a bend like that. A little bit more. Okay, and then we're looking at, oh God, I need glasses. Thank you. Okay. So 12. We're gonna go a little bit more. I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that money right there. Okay. And then the fall. Now this, okay, here's the thing. Um, if this is too high, right? In other words, if, if this is too, if this distance is, is, is not adequate, what'll happen is the float level is the fuel, the flue level inside the carburetor is gonna be over the boosters. So what's gonna happen is it'll either flood out or uh, more, more common, you'll make a turn and as you make a turn or you hit the brake hard, the car will stumble and die, and it's because the float level is set too high and the fuel is actually splashing into the carburetor. So that's why this adjustment is so important. And then your drop adjustment, well, you make your drop adjustment by bending this tang right here. Okay, so now I've got to take this back out to bend that tang enough. Nothing like using the right tool for the job. Okay. Anything's a tool if it works. <laughs> this is true. First day on the job here. Here we go. Technically, this is my first day. <laughs> <laughs> Never rebuilt another brook. Well, there you go. All right. 
so we didn't change our full adjustment and that's about right let me see here all right i gotta i gotta bring it in a little bit more so i'll just push this with the screwdriver Check all goes first. Yeah, wait, hang on now, because I want to show I want to show that. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna I gotta adjust out a hair more. And I'll while you do this. Okay, now on these carburetors you have this blank right there, and you've got this check ball. Okay. And this is to keep fuel from getting siphoned through the accelerator pump squirters. So here, yeah, drop that. So we drop the ball in first, ball goes first, then the slug, and then that goes on. Okay, okay that's close enough. Do the same thing on the other side. Let me see. So I'm just going to measure the drop first because it's it's right there in my face. Okay, that's going to come down just a hair. You gotta do it very gently. Okay. There you go. Fourteen thirty seconds. Right on the money. Okay. Yep. Now we have to go back and redo the drop. Should have done. Should have gone in the right order, but I didn't. Okay. There you go. One inch on the drop. Fourteen thirty seconds. Full. Okay. That's good to go. So we got all of this locked down. Yep, they're tight. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to test the accelerator pump just to make sure that this is all going to work. So, in lieu of gasoline, we'll use some of this. This is our new accelerator pump. Just make sure we get a good squirt out of there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Ah, much, much better than new. All right, we're almost ready to put this thing together. We got to... Did you forget the piece? That's important, you know? <laughs> Just a little bit. All right, yeah, take those screws back out again. <laughs> Jesus. We'll break here for a second. <laughs> yeah. Action. Okay, so now you're gonna put these, these dams in here, right? You see the slots mm -hmm. that they fit into? Okay, and they go, they go that way. All right, so put those in there, and I'm gonna put the accelerator pump in the top just, here. Just slide on in. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and you got that other one. Just to make sure that they're riding in the thing, otherwise. Okay. And then our accelerator pump spring, right? Drop that in there. Okay. And on this end here, we have our. Let's see. We got our S link. I need those glasses again, I can't see. Okay. Well, much, much better than new. 
Okay, we have an issue here. It's too big. We have an issue. The, uh, the hole for the accelerator pump is too small for the link to pass through. This is what happens when you, <laughs> when you buy a cheap universal kit. Oh, God. Okay, we're going to break again while I drill out the hole in the accelerator pump. So, so here you see what we got. There's, there's that little hole right there, okay, and here's the, the, the link, and it doesn't pass through there. So, okay, I'll, uh, we'll be right back. Gotta love Chinese. Right. All right, so we drilled our hole. You know, you get what you pay for, right? We drilled our hole, so this thing goes in here like so. And then we put our S-link on there, and then we put this, okay, and the screw. Oh. Right, I think we're ready to uh, to drop this sucker off. Our spring is in there. Okay. Okay. Alright, this this is overextended. There we go. Okay. Alright. Throw the screws in there. Alright, and while he, you're doing that, I'll uh we got our drop rods that have to go back in. So these are the drop rods, the metering rods. Okay, and you get these springs. You drop the spring in the hole first. Okay. And you make sure this thing moves freely, just like that. Okay, remember these are vacuum operated, so you don't want to have any any binding or anything like that. Okay. And uh, that's that's that Torx. Oh, the okay. Yeah, we we couldn't find the right Torx screw for this, or a quarter inch box wrench works. That's what the hex head's for. Yeah. Do we want to clean those? Okay. Oh, they're all right. Okay. I need to I need to just use this. I just gotta lift this up for a second. Okay. Okay. Spring. Drop rod. Come on. These drop rods go right into the jet. That's why. Uh, there we go. I just want to make sure that, that moves freely. And it does. And we'll lock this down. Am I in your way? Oh, I'm trying not to be in your way. How many people can we get on a carburetor? I don't know. We can check the parking lot. I think that's that's pretty much it. We got to put our uh, accelerator pump link on there. And just get these tightened down. Yep. Don't gorilla them, you know. Oh no, just. No, I'm I'm saying for you know, just some people just like, make this oh, tighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not to gorilla them. Uh, this is the link for the accelerator pump. So. He's done with that. Uh, when we install this, okay, which I'm not going to do at this moment because I have to get little clips on there, but when we install this, we're going to put it in the middle hole here, okay, just like that. So when it opens the throttle, uh, the end hole is for a very mild shot. This end hole here is for a very aggressive shot. So just to start our tuning, we're going to put it in the middle and then go from there. So, okay, that's it. This thing is together, right? Yep. Okay. So um, we're going to start our adjustment with these screws all the way in. Turn them out a turn and a half. One half. One and a half, yeah. One, one and a half. Right. 
half, one, one half. Okay, and that's going to be our starting point with this. Um, and what we'll do is, when when you can bring the car back? Whenever. You want to come back tomorrow night? Uh, not tomorrow night. Okay. But I can do it Thursday. Thursday. All right. So Thursday, we'll stick this thing on the car, get our fine adjustments on it, and we'll find out whether it was, you know, the fact that you know the, the old carburetor had an issue, or there's a problem with the engine or the basic tune-up that won't allow it to take a proper size carburetor. All right. Sounds like a plane, right? Sounds good. That's it. See you tomorrow.